<clears throat> the guy's a busy man. I'm sure he is. Yep. Oh man. Oh, we got we got our butt. Look who it is. Oh damn! Hey, Marius. Yeah, look at that. Look at that picture. Look at that flow. <laughs> oh, that flow. He spends all his time behind the camera, but he absolutely could spend some time in front of it too. Yeah. Yeah, Top definitely. Boy. There he is. How you guys doing? Fine. How are hey, you? Man. Oh, I'm good. Just busy, huh? Busy, 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 busy. <laughs> Oh, well, screen. just checking your settings. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got uh, we got Matt here, and I love. I actually I love that you just put your name as Matt with one T. <laughs> I don't know here. if I've ever well, told you about that's this my name <laughs> or asked you about this before, but uh, one of my lifelong friends and also the guy who got me into CrossFit back in 2013, his name is Matthew, also spelled with one T. And really. That in a you know, I, I was introduced to CrossFit that year. You were already competing. You took fifth, I believe, at the Northeast Regional. And you know, just being who I am, as soon as I found out that this there was a competition involved with this, and my friends were we were all doing it, <clears throat> I was like, oh, we're gonna have a fantasy kind of a season or something like this. And uh, you know, I start immediately doing research as I'm creating this thing, and I start looking back. Well, who were the guys last year that like? kind of did some good stuff but didn't break through and i saw i saw your results i was like hmm, looks like this guy's maybe not that far off from being pretty good at this thing and i told my buddy i said matt i, I don't think you're the fittest matt with one t anymore <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome i i only know one other guy uh with one t in his name and it's matt best so i'm like all right i'm, I'm oh, in yeah. good company so it's yeah. a badass dude <laughs> Yeah, Matt, Matt, uh, Matt's, yeah, if you can be, yeah, you know, that guy's, you know, a trained killer, obviously, and, um, yeah, makes pretty decent coffee, so not, yeah, not, not, <laughs> not bad, not bad company at all. Well, mm -hmm. we, <clears throat> obviously, you did make it that year. His brother, actually, they're Irish twins less than a year apart. He, he took a risk. He picked you third, third pick overall that year, and you ended up taking Damn. second at the games, obviously, and, uh, Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> it went a long way for him on the standings, as you can imagine. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I was I was always curious because he told me that, uh, you know, probably 20, 30 years ago that uh, his mom meant to spell it with two T's. She wanted to name him after the book in the Bible, and she just <laughs> made a mistake in the hospital. Really? Yeah. See, my, 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 my mom was just like, why Matthew? Like, no, there's a <laughs> T, logical. T, H. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense, and yeah, so that that was her reasoning behind it. Um, I I don't know, I don't think it went much further than that. It's like, no, wow. this sounds, this looks like the correct way to to spell it. That sounds like a a skit from Key and Peele, you know, the A A Ron, the I know. A A Ron, <laughs> A A Ron, <laughs> A Method Two. <laughs> no, that makes. There we go. For those who are trying to think, what, one, what, two, were some of the, what were some of the other names that they used um, in that skit? It was God, gold. It was a A Ron. Um, I, I forget them all, but every yeah. single one of them had me cackling. Block, block A. Block A. <laughs> yeah, block A. You mean, you mean Blaine? Or, yeah, it was uh, Blake. It was Blake that you say Block A. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. But, um, well, well thanks obviously, for your... if you guys are tuning in, you probably know Matt uh, for his success in the sport of CrossFit at the very least. But uh, at least for to begin with, we're not going to talk too much about CrossFit here. I mean, you, you've been on the road. Uh, you've had a major life change this year, obviously, with, uh, well, we can get to that, I guess, in a, in a minute. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, with with your daughter being born. Um, and you don't, you know, you don't, you don't go out and do this that often anymore, podcasts and public speaking, whatever. Wow. So before, you know, anything else, I just want to kind of take a chance to catch up with you and what life has been like. I think your daughter's got to be pretty close to six months or seven months old Se seven months seven months now yeah seven months in a day in a couple days and um yeah i i mean it's this this type of stuff you know doing podcasts uh you know it's definitely gotten pulled way back it's just my schedule is hectic now compared to what it used to be like life before was simple like it was much it was really really hard but it was very simple you know i woke up and i knew i had to do one thing every single day so i did it um 
but now, you know, the to-do list is a bit more like a laundry list. Um, so yeah, you know, a bit more selective, but you know, catching up with you guys, it's like, I've been wanting to catch up with you for a while now anyway. So it kind of worked out, but yeah, having, having a daughter, you know, so Eddie is my, my first child, uh, Sammy's first child. Um, and it has been, I don't know how to describe it. Like it's just been wild. Um, but it's, you know, we, I, I kind of saw the opportunities of, you know, what I've worked for and the opportunities that it could provide. And, you know, one of the biggest things was I want, I want that time with my kid. I don't want to have to be in the office all day, every day. I want to be, you know, an active father figure in my kid's life. And so, you know, we were super fortunate that, you know, she was two or three months old and we just went to Hawaii for two months. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like packed up and it's like, nope, we're not working. We're not doing, doing much of anything. It's like, no, nope, we're going here so we can just be full-time parents. Um, so, you know, little things like that. Uh, it's been phenomenal. Now that we're back home, we're trying to find the, the routine of when you fit in all of the other things you have to do during the day and still be a good parent at the end of the day. So yeah, it's been been incredible. I'm always curious because obviously I travel a lot and somehow or another, I feel like there's always a baby on the plane <laughs> within so within super, super funny. I so I've always been, you know, if there's a baby on the plane, it's you know, you see some of the eye rolls and it's like, well, it's a baby. It's way more miserable for them than it is you like they feel like their heads exploding. Um, so uh you know, it's, I've always noticed a baby on a plane when it's crying and it's kind of like, all right, whatever, you know? Um, but then I remember Sam and I were going somewhere and it was like the entire gate had people with babies. And I was like, where the fuck did all these babies come from? And Sammy legit was like, <laughs> oh no, they've, they've always been there. You've just never noticed. And, uh, but yeah. And how did Eddie do on the traveling? Dude, she is a little stud when it comes. She's like she's done so many flights. Um, yeah, I, I forget how many flights she's been on, but I mean, in her first three months, I mean, there was at least a half dozen um, trips. So you know, come flying in and out of Vermont, so you got at least two planes for every trip. Um, but yeah, she's she's a stud. You know, we just she just straps on to onto Sammy and then gets on the plane and just nods off and yeah yeah we she's my first so you know it's a little little bias but um i'm pretty confident that we have one of the easiest babies that there is just chill fun her baseline is just happy all the time so it's really really good first embrace a trick baby you know she's gonna trick <laughs> yeah, us into having a lot more <laughs> right. uh, but yeah it's been incredible well, that's what I, you know, that's what I was always curious about with like, if, you know, cause babies they're to absorb and to adapt and to learn as they go. And so if you, if you start taking them on trips early, maybe that, that, that works and they just start, you know, kind of getting used to this as being part of life. And <clears throat> if it, on the other hand, they only do it every once in a while, maybe it's not as good, but I don't really know. Yeah. I mean, who, who knows, you know, is it, you know, she's chill because we're chill. Is she just a chill demeanor? Is she good at flying because we do it a bunch? Who knows? Um, you know, it's any any situation we're in, it's like worst case scenario, she's going to be snuggled and loved. And it's like, if she cries for nine hours, it's like, we can't do much over that. It's like, mm -hmm. is she fed? <laughs> is she changed? Is she snuggled? Like, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been phenomenal. It's hard to explain anyone that is a parent uh, yeah, I don't have to explain it. Um, but yeah, it's been, been amazing. And of course, you know, integrating her into the life that you guys already had is, is a big deal. But I think that maybe, you know, a lot of people who know kind of what you're up to now, they, they recognize HWPO as a training program. But, uh, I think you guys are much, are a little bit even more than that, that, that people don't necessarily maybe know about or have a full understanding of of everything that HWPO is involved with or in. Um, what are some of the kind of the kind of initiatives that you guys have going on right now that, that maybe people don't always know about? Um, you know, just kind of like direction that the company's going or just like overall. 
overall yeah, I mean, what, what we're about. Yeah. I mean, I got to come up there last year and, um, you know, obviously there's, there's people like Jake Marconi and Josh Godinez that are really well integrated into what you guys have been doing and have been. Mm -hmm. You got Harry Pally there. You got Steve Fawcett. I mean, you guys have a, a lot of good, good coaches that have had kind of, uh, you know, Josh is a little bit younger than some of those guys, but those other guys have had kind of successful careers of their own regard mm -hmm. and you've been bringing them in. Um, so whether that's freed you up to do some other stuff or what, what are those guys kind of working on? Is it mostly just the programming or what, where do you guys have your fingers in? Yeah. I mean, um, uh, yeah, you know, we've just been growing our team and couldn't be more thrilled about it. You know, uh, like I've, I've known Steve for, you know, I met him at the games when he competed there. So like we've known of each other for a long time, but then in the last couple of years gotten a lot of like sit downs with him, and it's like, damn, this guy knows his stuff. Um, so just putting people like that in the positions that they're in, you know, even somebody like Josh, um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure most people have gotten to see him, meet him, know about him, but uh, it's it's just been incredible. You know, he is a younger, newer coach, but it's like once you start picking his brain, that's when you see the genius coming out. And like, I don't think it's an exaggeration when I say genius. Like when it comes to memorizing book smart, like that kid is off the charts. Um, so yeah, you know, it's just putting right people in the right roles, but then. I mean, what we're doing now, it's like, it's so much. It is <laughs> like, there's been so many things that it's just been like, you know, trying to get the dominoes in place and try to get the foundation built and the right people in the roles so that when we press go on something, it's go. It's not immediately into our first hurdle or speed bump or whatever it is. Um, so, you know, like right now it's, you know, what's taking a, a lot of time and effort is, uh, is we're launching affiliate programming here shortly. Um, you know, once it's something that we've been working on and working towards for a long time. Now we tried interviewing several different people to the point of like, Hey, send us a month worth of what you think is good programming for an affiliate. Like that's how late into the interviews we've been getting. And, you know, we finally found somebody that is, one I, I didn't think would be an option, but just the perfect fit, um, you know, for blending with us, for providing for the community. Um, so, you know, affiliate, it's right around the corner. Um, what else do we have? Um, oh, I know that because you were talking about Josh, I know him and Jake have taken quite a few trips down to South America, Central America. And I've never even really been quite sure what all is going on down there, but there haven't been that many people from North America that have like really invested in that market. And I, th you know, I travel all around the world for cross the competitions. I really haven't gone to any in South America the past two years. Um, and I think it's great that they're down there, but I, I don't know if you can give us any insight into what exactly you guys are doing in South America. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, anytime, anytime we have the opportunity to go, uh, you know, it's, you want to see a community that is excited for competitions, for whatever, throw down, get together, there it is. Um, it is wild. And so, you know, whether it's we're going down to start working with some athletes or, you know, meeting people for the affiliate, whatever the reasoning is, it's just like it's so well received down there. Um, but I think a big part of the push is, uh, you know, we're pushing for a multi language. It's, you know, we're just in English right now, website, app, everything. Um, and so we want to have multi-language so we're launching with french spanish and portuguese initially so website uh program everything will be translated um and then kind of a tie between the affiliate oh my god i'm sorry my notifications are on and oh yeah guys, I, I have a note on. right in front of me it says notifications off <laughs> yeah i'm sorry i'm just gonna just flick on my focus here there we go. Hopefully I stopped getting dinged. Um, but yeah, so kind of tying in the multi-language and the affiliate programming is we're doing, we're relaunching our flagship and 60 program so that they integrate in with the affiliate program. Uh, you know, that was just a big, big piece that we saw missing was, you know, the separation between the group and the individual. And we've heard it for years of, you know, affiliate owners saying like, ah, we don't like people doing other programming, you know, they take up resources, take up space, um, and everything that goes with it. 
So it's like, okay, you know, we're listening to members. We're listening to, you know, the affiliate owners, everything. So we're revamping the, our two biggest programs to sync up with the affiliate programming. So that even if you're doing individual programming, if your home gym does HWPO, it's the same Metcon every day. So you still have that community aspect of doing, doing your workout, the training you're going to be doing is going to complement what they're doing in class. So it's more of an add on instead of something different. Um, but we just wanted to, even if you're not here, even if you don't have a training partner that's doing the individual track you're doing, you still have that daily touch point of community and jumping into a workout with other people that you're around. Um, but <clears throat> that is a really heavy lift. Um, it's, you yeah, know, when you have adding years, three languages and an affiliate programming, I can understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, we're, uh, yeah, we're, we're keeping busy over here. You are, I mean, you guys are working, uh, hard, <clears throat> but, uh, don't seem to have any, um, any of the big athletes on site this year, you know, at, at least in the full-time capacity they have been in the, in the last couple of years. Um, does that, how does that change the flow of things during the day? Is it easier maybe to just like focus in the business side, not have that distraction or do you miss having them around? Uh, no. So that's just temporary. That's just uh, the time of the season that we're in, you know, like our first year, it was, I think, you know, say I'm training in Verm or I'm training with HWPO. I'm training with Matt I'm training in Vermont for the season. So I'm going to be there for the full season. Um, and you know, it's just weighing, weighing the pros and cons of yes, being here may be better physically for your training, but now you're away from your family, you're away from your dog, you're out of your house, you know, so all those little things can add up. Um, but no, we still plan on having most, if not all of our athletes here for a good chunk of the season. But it just right now, like we're just coming out of winter now, like we still I think we're expecting snow in the next day or two. So, <laughs> you know, going swimming in the lake, going to the track workouts, uh, it's just a lot of that stuff is a lot more difficult. So it's not as important for them to be here right now. You know, and we're trying to de-emphasize the open quarterfinals of like, hey, we don't need to lose nights of sleep over the open. Like, you know, this year was the perfect example of like, we all watched Brooke do her third workout and she still pushed on to the next stage of qualifying. And it's like, that should show the athletes like, hey, you don't need to be stressing about the open. You don't need to be retesting it. If you're a perennial games athlete, do the open. Like, don't stress about it. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's stuff like that. But, yeah, we'll we'll start having a lot more traction here probably, like, within the next couple of days, if not a week. Yeah. I mean, well, you had, quite, you had quite a few, just, um, uh, what, the 24.3. You mm -hmm. had quite a few athletes there as well as uh, people that are just in your individualized programming. Uh, what was the idea behind that? Having um, Literally just, just, just that. Uh, just get everyone together. Hey, it's the final week of the open. Let's all throw down, have a good time. Um, you know, we opened this, our, our, like our space here uh, a little bit less than a year ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And, and we haven't had an event where we could bring in a lot of people where we're using the space for, you know, its full capabilities. So that was just so much fun. It was so cool getting, um, you know, having members come in, getting to meet members, uh, you, basically my whole weekend, it's like, I didn't do very much set up, tear down any of that stuff. It was like, I just 10, 15 minutes with every single member over three days. And it's like some of them, it's like, no, I'll, I'll know them for the rest of my life. And it's phenomenal. Um, and then for them, you know, whether it's just a weekend getaway or they've been itching to come here for years and years, um, you know, whatever it is, it's just, it's just really cool to, you know, have members meet other members. Mm -hmm. Oh, like perfect example was one of the ones. Um, I think, I think it was the Vermont crew that they were coming here and we made like a Slack channel for them of like, Hey, this is where we're passing along all the information. And then after the event happened, we had multiple members like, Hey, can you leave that Slack channel open? Like we all communicate with each other now, now that we've met up now that some of us live close, close to each other, you know, they're like, do you mind leaving that channel up? And we're, for us, we're like, fucking absolutely. Like, this is our dream scenario of like, our members are wanting to connect on their own. Great. And you, you even throw down that night a little bit, didn't you? A little bit, a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was hesitant um, with just moving, doing that many reps 
you know, like with just with where my knee is in its recovery, I was like, I'm sure I could, and I'm sure I'd be fine. But in that one in a million chance that it's like, <laughs> I was doing a workout that I knew I wasn't prepared for. I haven't done those movements. I haven't done those weights, but I jumped in because it was fun. And then I retore my ACL and I was like, no, I'm not taking that chance. I'm not rolling those dice. So I was like, I'll move nice and slowly. I'll keep the volume low. Um, but it was a ton of fun. Um, one getting to meet Adam clink, you know, he and I, we've known of each other for 10, 12 years. You know, he's, he's always been, um, with Ben Smith and good friends with him. I didn't realize that they were friends from like ninth grade. I didn't realize long that. Time. Um, yeah. 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 Long time friends, but you no, know, he's always been a familiar face. We've always kind of nodded, said hi, but we've never had a reason to connect and, uh, you know, just stuff like that of like people in the space that I've known in for 10 years, but they've just been acquaintances and actually getting to meet them, spend time with them, connect with them. It's like, damn, this is, this is great. Well, I, I personally really love the idea of a partner workout for that workout. It sounds way more enjoyable. I know, right? Yeah. Thing. It was way more enjoyable, <laughs> way more enjoyable. <laughs> I was, uh, I was in a bad place on that one. Like we're just not good in physical health anyway. And I was like, but yeah. I think I need to take a, a a page out of your book at some point and just not sign up for one because otherwise I just feel like I have to keep them going and I'm not competing <laughs> for anything you know I'm training for life but um, but yeah, that's no, cool. I did I did I did the first two um, as prescribed RX by myself and then it was just that last one I was like ah you know that many thrusters at that weight and I'm like I haven't done a bar muscle up in I couldn't tell you how long um, so I was like I'm going to try to do the responsible thing and make sure that I can come back tomorrow and the next day and progress into this, uh, the way I should. I think as long as we're kind of on this topic, you know, pr there are probably a lot of people interested of, you know, what, what do you do these days for fitness? I mean, you're obviously still active, but you know, not doing bar muscle ups. I'm sure there's other things that you've taken out of the equation. Yeah. Um, I mean, and don't get me wrong. There's some days I'll still jump in. Like I'll be feeling, feel a little saucy and jump in, but, um, no, as of recently, it's, uh, my buddy, my buddy Jack and I have been working out five, five fifteen in the morning. Um, you know, it's usually a mix. Um, you know, he's got three kids. I have one kid. So, you know, it's, it's adapting to what, what our work day looks like and what our, uh, what our home life looks like that morning. But, uh, no, it's been good. Um, I'm, it's been really exciting. I've been getting back into doing some Olympic lifts. Um, yeah, I was definitely one of the last things to come back that I was interested in doing was, mm -hmm you know, doing cleans or snatches because I'm like, I've been training my snatch since I was 12 years old. So it's not just my CrossFit. I, I thought my weightlifting career was done by the time I started CrossFit. Like I was ready to hang up athletic cleats before I started CrossFit. And then I found CrossFit and I was like, oh, 10 more years of squatting, snatching, clean and jerk and all this shit. So, you know, when I was finally done i was like all right i want to take some time off from snatching um and i knew i would come back to it you know it's what i've <laughs> done for such a large chunk of my life and and i am getting back into that now so it's it's felt nice to get back into you know even something like squatting or cleaning and it feels like it used to because like i blew out my knee so i tore my acl mcl lcl and i tore the meniscus off the bone Full and job. i did all I did all of this when Sammy was three months, four months pregnant. Um, so when, when I had surgery, she is like full, full mm -hmm. pregnant. Um, we moved out to California, stayed out at a friend's house for two weeks. I had a friend that was super generous to gave me his house. Um, and so, you know, she's taking care of me. I can't do fucking anything on my own getting down a flight of stairs, getting in a car, nothing. Um, so, you know, her life got put on hold while, while she's pregnant, she has other shit to be worried about. Um, and then, you know, even once we get home, it's like, we get home, I have to get back to coaching. It's middle of winter. So Sammy's out there shoveling the driveway so I can get down to the gym on my crutches. Like it was, it was a really, really, really shitty time for the both of us. Um, like I was fucked up, like my personal identity, I couldn't do anything for myself. Um, you know, in the moment it's like, you know, you're just like, ah, you know, my knees, this sucks. But 
the the roots that it has into the other aspects of my life, it had a big, big effect. So, you know, people always ask like, Oh, you're going to go back to jujitsu. And I'm like, fuck no, absolutely not. Even <laughs> if there's a 1% chance yeah. of me putting Sammy and my family through that again, of not only, you know, the extra burden on them of the, all the stuff that she has to do. I was a fucking prick. Oh, I was, and didn't, didn't even realize it. you're just depressed. You don't know why it's fucking cold. You can't do anything. Your whole identity just got ripped away. Like it's without even realizing it, you're just fucking upset. And, uh, you know, once you're far enough away, you're like, oof, I was a miserable time. Sorry to anyone that was around me. Um, but it's just like, okay, like moving forward, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I don't put my loved ones through that situation again. Um, so, so no yeah. rematch. So no rematch with Nunez, huh? No, <laughs> I don't. E even if I was healthy, I don't. I wouldn't want to <laughs> fucking rematch with her, <laughs> dude. When, when I when I rolled with her, I genuinely thought. So I think she fights at 155. Mm -hmm. So you know, she probably Which walks around like 165. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I I was like, there's no doubt in my mind that she's going to win. Mm -hmm. Like, she's fucking Amanda Nunes. Yes. Um, but I was like, I figured. I would I would manhandle her, I would out strength her and put her where I wanted, and then like she would use my strength against me at some point, boom, mm -hmm. and and submit me. That was not the case. <laughs> she put me wherever she wanted me. I had no say in the matter. Like even straight, like hands, like hands on wrist, it's like I couldn't break her. Mm -hmm. It was it gave you it gave me a whole wow. new appreciation for it of just like like in a straight up fight. Amanda Nunes, like it's, it wouldn't even be a close battle with my added body weight, added strength, added mm -hmm. all these things, not even close. It was shocking. <clears throat> I only have one, like one experience I can draw on from that. It was when I was in rehab many, many years ago. And I met a guy who was like, uh, basically an NSA agent and he was just like a trained killer, but he was tiny. He was like five foot seven, maybe 160 yeah. pounds, but I'm like, he showed me a couple things and I was like, yeah, I would take you in a fight against anybody. <laughs> it was scary. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I remember rolling with one guy at practice, like 130 pounds soaking wet. And that's being generous because, cause I know how small a hundred pound human is maybe 130 pounds. And it was like, I, I could bend him any way I wanted to, but he was so flexible. It's like, I'm like, oh, I'll put your knee behind your head. And he was like, good, I wanted it there anyways. <laughs> you know, and he's like, I'll still top you out, you know? It, it's, it's fucking incredible. Yeah, just oh. like, yeah, no, knowing what to do, how to do it, leverage those little pressure points and things like yeah. that. I mean, it's, it can be pretty scary when you meet someone like that. Or I well, Matt, well, Matt, you've seen, like, you've been kind of a part of the, especially recently with kind of like the retired operator world where, you know, through max and through some of these guys from black rifle um, and those guys, you, you look at them, you know, these are green berets, some are SF guys and you look at them and, you know, some, well, max might, Matt might be the exception, but most of those guys just seem are very unassuming guys, you know? Well, I mean, like, uh, I mean, he'll probably be upset, but like Evan, the, yeah. Yeah. one of the other owners at black rifle, yeah. like you see him and it's like, all right, regular nine to five dude, like dude, David, yeah. little smaller guy, and mm -hmm. and then it's like you start hearing his resume, and you're mm -hmm. like, holy shit! Yeah. Like I remember he was telling me a story. He's like, oh yeah, you know, taking rounds to to the the driver door. He's like, no, I'm getting AK rounds like two inches from my mm -hmm. face, and he's like, I'm just annoyed because I have to put my sandwich down, put it in drive, and <laughs> carry it. Like, huh? <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of want to get back to that. I mean, um, I, I was able to catch up with uh, O'Keefe at Wadapalooza, and you guys actually sponsored a team um, from West Point. Um, mm -hmm. And and I, I've know I've I've known how long you've been. I guess I wouldn't call it. I guess charitable towards the military, and how appreciative you've been to the mil military. I mean, you win that USO tour. Um, you know, a, one of my units was deployed at the time, and they met you over in Iraq, and they said that you're just amazing. You, Sammy and O'Keefe, uh, and who, what, who's the pro skater that was with you or, uh, was it, um, Sean white? Yeah. Sean white was with you, but, uh, but mm -hmm. it seems like the last couple, the last year, you guys have really made an effort to, um, 
you know, being more involved with the uh, military, uh, military community. And uh, what, what kind of like kind of has driven that? Um, so, I mean, like the USO tour, um, I think, I think Sammy and I have done like four or five of them mm-hmm. at this point. Um, you know, like the first one we did was the most publicized cause it was like the Christmas yeah. tour. Yeah. So it was eight days. I think we had like 13 different stops in eight different mm-hmm. countries. Like it was an experience mm-hmm. of a lifetime. Um, but then after that, it's just like the USO reaches out and they're like, Oh, like, do you have interest in doing this? I'm like, yeah, fucking mm-hmm. all the time. Let's go. Um, you know, it's just people people helping out and it's like you're just helping people that are trying to help themselves mm-hmm. and it's like hey you're giving up so much um like one of the most i'm gonna butcher this um but one of the, one of the best uso trips i did was um it was a ymca camp in i want to say tennessee mm-hmm. and it was for the children of soldiers for kids who have both parents that are deployed mm. um and and so you know these kids are home their both parents are deployed it's like what are you going to do and so it was uh, it was a camp where they just brought all these kids together with their with their chaperones and it's like they meet every year so that they they have that same consistency you know if they're military kids and they're bouncing around all the time every time they go to a different school they it's all new faces they don't know mm-hmm. anyone but with this it was like it provided an opportunity for the kids to see familiar faces meet their friends that are in very similar situations to them of like it's hard to relate to for a kid that yeah both my parents are deployed and i move every 18 months yeah not too many kids are going to relate to that except the other kids that are going through it Mm -hmm. um so it's stuff like that where it's like you're just helping people that that i don't i don't want to say like can't help themselves or don't have the resources to help themselves um but yeah you know it's shit like that it's like you leave you leave there one it's like, I hope I made an impact on their day. I hope that they appreciate or they took something of positive, you know, fuck it. Even if they're happy that I left, like, sure. I put a <laughs> smile on their face somewhere. Um, but then, but then also like selfishly, like the gratuity I have when I leave and I'm like, holy shit. Like I, I, I never, I never had to deal with that as a kid growing up. I think about how fortunate my childhood is, how fortunate my life is now of, you know, wh- whatever it is. So whether it's, you know, you feel the benefit from, from helping them or just the the benefit from how you feel when you leave. Um, it, it's a win-win all around. And has that transferred with, to what you've kind of been doing with uh, the U S military Academy at West point, kind of like, the, was it black and gold CrossFit or. Um, yeah. Um, you know, uh, like we, so the team captain, for the CrossFit team at West Point mm-hmm. is is actually one of my neighbors. Oh, Su- super funny! Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, this yeah this kid named Kale. He took seventh in the yeah Lehman. Lehman Open worldwide. Um, so he's he's like he lives maybe a mile from my house, and I met him at West Point. So like I went there. I'm like, oh, you know, where are you from? He's like, oh, I'm from Williston, Vermont. I'm like, <laughs> excuse me. Did he say that? Did he say that knowing you were also from there? Well, he, I think he knew I was he from knew. like Colchester. Um, I don't think he knew I lived in Williston, um, but he, I think he knew I was from Colchester. And so, you know, he, I was like, how have we never met? And he was like, oh, you know, I used to drop into Champlain Valley during school breaks and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, he was on spring break. And so he was training, he, training here all week. Um, but no, that was just like, it's just another group. They're doing phenomenal things. And so it's like, Hey, if we can help out in any way, um, let us know, you know, you're doing something that we consider ourselves very good at and Mm -hmm. you're good people. You know, you're obviously very high achievers. You're all at West point. Mm -hmm. So it's like, where, where can we help out? Where can we be a benefit? Um, but yeah, we do, we do a bunch of stuff like that. Not, not all of it gets posted. Sure. Um, but yeah, we, we're always doing stuff like that. And it's kind of the same, same lines as like our, our monthly give, um, that, that has to be one of the most the proudest things about the company that that i have is you know it's it's reoccurring it's every month we give five thousand dollars um you know it's i look at that of like oh this is awesome like we gathered enough resources for for our people for our company like we are good and now we can start 
you know, sending out those resources everywhere else. Like we're good. We got, we got what we need. We we're growing, we're happy, everything. So it's like, who else can we help? Who else is doing good things that, you know, maybe we can speed up that process a little bit, help out, make life a little bit easier. And so, you know, like that 5,000 a month, every month. And I hope it goes on for fucking ever. Um, you know, it's just helping out, trying, trying to be good person. I don't know. <laughs> is it, uh, is it difficult to decide where to send those, those resources every month or is it just kind of come naturally? Have you, you know, how does that work for you guys? Um, so I think, I think like the first year that we were doing it, O'Keefe and I just rattled off. Like we, we've worked with enough nonprofits mm -hmm. over the years. Like we filled up that first, that first year, year and a bit very quickly and easily. Um, but then it's really cool handing off, handing that responsibility to somebody else and be like, this is your job. Find companies that are the most deserving of a donation. And, and it's great. You know, they come to us with different, different options and it's like it is tough to to pick which one we do but hopefully it just keeps growing to a point you know like we call we call on our members of like hey we we are we're donating this money whether you guys do or not so it's not like we're matching dollar for dollar it's like nope mm -hmm. we're doing it and we we hope that doing the right thing for the right reasons for the right people is enough of an excuse that it's contagious and other people catch on to it of um, yeah you know it's you know even if you can only give 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Um, it's something and it adds up. It adds up if the whole community gets on board. It's like we can help a lot of a lot of people. I do think make maybe I'm wrong. I think that you are actually matching something dollar for dollar coming up. However, it, uh, are we? I don't know. Sammy and Matt uh, or Sammy and O'Keefe, I should say, have been training for something. Oh, oh for, the, oh, for the oh, for the Boston in. Marathon. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was fucking that was another thing that like when it, it got I got asked like, Hey, do you want to run this marathon? And it was like <laughs> the week after I blew out my knee. And so I was like, so I had to cancel. I canceled a, uh, a ski trip, like a ski trip. I was very excited for with O'Keefe. Um, so I had to cancel Japan? that. And then was that Japan. Yeah. Dude, yeah. He's told me oh, about those trips to Japan, man, bro. The trip to Japan, dude, we had it paid. I had it booked. I had it paid for. I had everything. And then uh, I blew up my knee and I was like, well, I'm not going. Um, <laughs> and so I just started calling friends like, hey, who's got, who's got a week off? Who wants to go to Japan? So I, I had a buddy that got got a fun trip to Japan out of it. Um, but yeah. So anyway, you had to cancel Japan. And then you were you actually you were planning to do the Boston Marathon with them originally? Yeah, I mean, like we got two bibs. And so like it was kind of like the natural idea that O'Keefe and I would would jump in on it. Um, yeah, we had another, we were starting on another challenge that was, uh, ended up being a bit more than, than the marathon. So like I had started training for that and then our, our focus got shifted because it's O2X that, um, oh, we're matching the Boston marathon donations. Thanks Presley. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's dope. If we're matching them, fucking make us go broke. Do it. Don't donate enough. We'll match it. Um, Shit, I forget what I was even saying. Um, you guys are training for something maybe other than yeah, the, yeah. The I mean, like we we yeah, we were training for something together, and then like my knee happened, and it was just, it's like I think I would be okay to run a marathon now, um, but just at the moment, I didn't want to make any plans around it, and then have that pressure of like, I didn't want to have any reason to like push my knee faster than I should. I was like, I'm not a competitor anymore, so I don't want, I, I don't, I don't want to have to push my body past physically what is healthy um yeah and so sammy stepped up took your spot yeah yeah sammy stepped up sammy i think she ran 16 miles yesterday um yeah she's chugging oh dude wait wait till you see o'keefe holy <laughs> shit dude the guy's lost like 40 pounds uh um, no way Dude, he has he has straight up abs. Like he is in the best shape I have ever seen him in. I think I've known O'Keefe twelve or thirteen years. Mm -hmm. Like not even a close second. He is in the best shape of his life. I've run with him. He is a gazelle. Now that he was already like, a runner, he was already a good runner. <laughs> and yeah. now, and now he's like leaned out. Like I think he's one hundred and eighty pounds. 
Wow. Dude, he that whooped, he whooped our ass. He, whooped, he, he beat me in PC handily back in 2021. We did the ruck run at West Coast Classic. And I mean, after half a mile, I was like, see you later. Oh, I mean, he is a runner now. Like, he, it is impressive. Yeah, so I'll be excited to see see what he could do in the marathon because he's run the Boston Marathon twice. Mm-hmm. And this is, without a doubt, the most prepared and best prepared he's, he's been. So it, it would be exciting. You think he's so going to he, run it for, like, uh, to try to put up a good time? Not just to kind of like casually do it with Sammy or anyone else. Oh no, no, he'll. I mean, like, a, I think a good time is relative. Um, for, for I him. think he'll. Put, I think he'll put up a very impressive time for him. Yeah, I'm kind of excited now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, gonna, it's savage, gonna be cool. Dude, but that's uh, to hear you say that about him kind of gets me like. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's crushing right now. He's putting in the miles. Do you think he beats Cooper? Cooper Marsh, yeah. <laughs> Cooper's been training. O- Cooper's been training. Is O'Keefe is O'Keefe gonna beat a squid? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bet money on that. Coop, go ahead, text me. O'Keefe's <laughs> O'Keefe's beating you, dude. Cooper's another one of those guys. You look at him and you're like, eh. but then I look at his open performances. I'm like, what the oh. heck? Who is this guy? Oh, he's 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 sneaky fit. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm not I'm not taking any anything away from Coop. Like I'm sure he'll do well in the marathon. I'm just I'm that confident on O'Keefe. I think wow. O'Keefe's gonna crush. Yeah. Damn, I'm kind of pumped for that now. Yeah. We have to cover that somewhere somehow. Maybe maybe we yeah. can add that to the Heat One app. <laughs> <laughs> O'Keefe versus Cooper Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? That's what dude? all eyes? That's what all eyes are going to be on for the Boston Marathon. Who exactly. cares about who's winning? Yeah, exactly. Cooper and O'Keefe. Who who's got oh, it? What, what's your role going to be during that? Are you just going to be waiting at the the finish line, just you know, with water in hand? Or <laughs> no, I'll be I'll be on baby duty, and then okay. uh, I'll, I'll probably be be on. Uh, I'll be having to like carry breast pumps. Like it, like Sammy's going to have yeah. to stop mid marathon to pump. Sure. Uh, yeah. And so I'll be I'll be on breast pump duty. I'll have to meet up with her at certain mile markers. Um, but no, I'll be on baby duty, snack duty. Um, I'll get, I finally get to be the caddy for the two people that have done it for me for, for my whole career. Yeah. Sammy and O'Keefe running around just food, food and whatever I needed. So now I get yeah. to, now I get to be that guy. Yeah. PC, do you have this, you, this playing on the same computer? What is that? I don't know. I like hear it coming again. The, the audio. Oh. Uh, my. Do you know. hear it, Matt? Yeah. That was strange. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that's coming from. Huh. Anyway. It's not coming from um, me. Yeah. <laughs> that's like totally distracting from whatever we were talking <laughs> about. <clears throat> How, um, how's, the, how's, the, how's the flying lessons going? Speaking of flying. Oh. <laughs> so good. Um, really? No, it, it was it was actually really cool. So you know, obviously, been doing it very casually uh, to start out, um, but it's like there's so much to learn. It's like every aspect of it. Even oh, Brian, Brian's on on the search for it. Yeah, now. he is. He is. It's driving him nuts. He found it. I found it. It just started playing on my phone out of nowhere. I figured. <laughs> Brian has like three phones now. He's kind of a big deal now. So you know. Oh. Oh, so cool! Yeah, no, Ooh. and that's yeah. never happened before. It literally just started playing the, the podcast on my phone. Yeah, that's that's strange. Um, but yeah, flying's going well. You know, it's uh, it was kind of cool. So I was you're beginning. Like I don't know if I'm doing well, if I'm doing poorly, anything. And then uh, I had a check ride. So I think I was at like ten or twelve hours of flying time. So you do a check ride. So a new instructor comes in, and they're just like, "Take us up. Show me what you know." Um, and so and then he basically grades you, um, but it's only just for me, for, for my yeah. own, like, Hey, you could work on this a little less time here and that. Um, so, so yeah, after that, it was really good. Um, just got like a really good, like study guide of, Hey, this is the stuff you suck at. And, um, <laughs> no, it's been going really well. You know, I got a couple buddies that are pilots, so, you know, I can kind of get their help with some chair flying stuff and some procedural stuff, but it is so exciting of just like, and I mean, flying in Vermont is just the most gorgeous 99% of the time, you know, we take off and yeah, you, you 
from the airport, you just shoot out over the lake and you go like either north practice areas just over, over the lake um, or like go up to across the lake to Plattsburgh and just practice landings. Um, but it's so fucking cool. Like just you're you're seeing the world from a different view, like mm-hmm. 3000 feet up in the air. So it's like you can still make out cars and people and buildings. And you're like, oh, that's my house. That's the lake. That's like you see where everything is. But the what I'm, I'm just excited for like the extra the extra added freedom. Um, it's like when you're 16 and you get your driver's license for the first mm-hmm. time, you're like, Oh, I feel like I have this like really shitty teleporter where it's like, Hey, I can teleport anywhere <laughs> at 60 miles an hour, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, as, as, as you age and it's like kind of novelty wears off and it's like, fuck, I gotta drive here, there, you, you kind of have your radius. But then as soon as you jump in, jump into a plane and it's like, Oh, my radius just expanded a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just coming from an engineering background too. It is like the, the planes I'm flying, it's Cessna 172. So very mechanical. Um, like there's no, there's only one hydraulic line on the whole plane. Everything else is, uh, you know, cables and pulleys. Um, so it's just been so much fun. One being a student again, trying to, learn figure out like all right what don't i know why don't i know it and how do i learn it um but then just the excitement of getting up in a fucking plane is so cool (laughs) (laughs) was it something that you had on your radar for a long time or was it something that kind of came about more recently just naturally um i think the interest the interest was always there so um so where, where I am in Vermont, there's a, there's a base and it's called, they're called the Green Mountain Boys. So growing up, it was always a fleet of F-16s that flew almost daily overhead and and now it's the F-35s. So like mm-hmm. the airport is a oh, yeah, mile I heard from, when I was there. from our gym. Yeah. So like when you watch them take off and you watch them do formations or drills or whatever it is, it's like, as, especially as a kid, you're looking up and you're like, that is so cool, but it seems so unobtainable. That, but and so much so that's like I'm not even gonna look at the process of like how do you become a pilot? You know, that sounds like a life commitment. Um, and then I think it was you know, friend of a friend was talking about it, or what the hell was it? Oh no, I had a guy in Tennessee. Um, the guy hit me up and he's like, Hey, my little brother is like your biggest fan. Would you train with him for a day? And I was like, Fuck yeah, sure. Like get come to nashville i'll meet up with you there and uh and so he flew flew in but like it was something about the way he was asking like what town am i going to i'm like you're flying to nashville and he's like no but what town are you in Mm -hmm. and so finally finally when he gets there i'm like oh you flew yourself like you have your own plane and so once again i'm like i'm like dude what are you (laughs) just rolling in it and he's like no 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 it's not like that he's like i own the plane through my business it's a combustion engine plane. So it's not, it's not a jet or a turbo mm-hmm. prop or anything like that. So it's like, and he broke down the expenses to me and it was for a business owner. It is very, very affordable. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, just with the price of the planes, as soon as you go combustion engine, it's like, they're not jets. Like, yeah. They're not burning just as much regular. Fuel. If you're running a flat six engine, it's, it's a car engine you know it's not anything crazy um the fuel it's not jet fuel it's mm-hmm. pretty inexpensive um but then taxes you get to depreciate the plane immediately just like a big truck or something so it's like you buy a quarter million dollar plane you write it off against your income uh but then the radius that it opens up for traveling if i want to start if we're in a position where we want to start going to visit athletes or visit gyms we can now visit five different states in one day you know or you're multiple states in one day or multiple gyms in one day um but the biggest thing for me when i just i just geek out on the learning like it is (laughs) um yeah i actually have my stuff right here like this is this is my study my study stuff that i've been going (laughs) through recently um but you know it's it's like you i know the feeling that was me that was me two weeks ago what were you studying hazmat course in the army 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, it was two weeks of learning everything how to like certify hazmat materials for transportation, you know, from air, sea, and land. But it was like every every yeah. every second day was a test, and if you f didn't get eighty percent, you were done with the course. And if you fail yeah. a military course, you're done. I mean, you're not coming back. You're not, you know. And I'm pretty high up. I mean, I'm a captain. I'm a commander of a unit, so it's like. What it looks pretty bad upon me if I come back failing yeah. a course, you know. So it's just like added pressure, and yeah, I was stressed out. So, but it was I, I get what you're saying. It was kind of fun learning because when you get to a certain age, you don't pick up books to learn anymore, and it was kind of yeah. neat learning like a new skill. Um, I mean, I probably won't use that skill for anything. I mean, um, but I mean, it's you did identify a hazardous material label while we were playing disc golf last weekend, though. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> so it did. It did keep in a little bit. I don't. I don't know how that's useful or anything. But, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's a little bit different when you actually do care about, like you said, in terms of flying. But uh, yeah, you could definitely I mean, just, tell. It, like I, I know it sounds so corny. I love being a student. Uh, it, there's of course there's times of frustration of like, especially with this where. You know, I'm trying to learn radio frequencies, this new language of how to talk on a radio. Uh, what are the rules when you're on the ground for ground control? What are the different airspace rules? And then never mind just flying the plane itself. Yeah. Um, and then if you're on, if you got gauges or if you have a glass display, it's all different. Um, so yeah, of course there's times of frustration or where it's tough or you feel lost or whatever it is, but it's like, oh, I love that shit. I love when you're just so confused and you're like, all right, I'll put this down for a minute. I'll start reading this over here. I'll put that down for a minute. I'll start reading. And then sure enough, just one day, it's like, it's just things start clicking. You're like, oh, fuck this thing from here. Oh, that's, that's what they're talking about up here. Now that dot's connecting and this one here. So it's, I just geek out on it. Who knows if it will, you know, evolve into anything. Um, but damn, like, yeah, I just think the the idea of being able to fly yourself somewhere is so cool. Um, so I'm I'm all I'm all about it. I just fucking love it. What What do you think is the the time frame for for that to happen? For to for be me able to, to fly, fly yourself? myself? Um, I don't know. Um, it kind of depends. Like like flight school has been tough recently. Um just because of the weather, you know, in Vermont. So I started in the fall, then we left for two months uh, to Hawaii. And then when we came back, so it was just overcast, overcast every day. And you can't fly unless the ceilings are above 3000 feet. So mm -hmm. most days were getting canceled. Um, so, you know, it just kind of depends on the schedule frequency. Like I know I've travel coming up the next couple of months, but I don't know, maybe me, I hope, I hope to do my first solo by the end of the year. Um, I think that's a pretty, pretty reasonable uh goal to set up like i think i'm at like 18 or 20 hours right now um so i'm sure i'll solo at some point in the near future um but then after that who knows um i i don't know where it's gonna go but it's like if nothing else it's like in 10 years it's like, yeah i'm a pilot whatever you know it's just like it's another it's a cool story it's a cool accolade i guess it's like it's a conversation starter it's a way to connect with other people like as soon as you meet another pilot you have something to talk about you know it's it's i, I just love those like going around connect basically just collecting different networks um mm -hmm. it's so fun getting to meet new people and like every time i have a new instructor it's like hey why'd you get into flying what, what are you into this thing for you know um and everyone has a different answer yeah yeah, that's cool. And but I think I, I mean I also think it would be badass. Like, is there anything cooler than having your own airplane hangar? Like you just show up and it's like, yo, this is my man cave. There's my plane, there's my yeah. car, there's my motorcycle, here's a ping pong table. Let's have a good time. You watch the you watch the opening scene of Top Gun way too much. Uh, the I, new Top Gun. <laughs> It, the opening, I think the opening, <laughs> yeah, the opening shot. The opening shot is like him working on his old uh, Tom Cruise working on one of his uh, planes, and then in it's like his yeah. man cave. He's got his motorcycle. He's got like you know vintage, I don't know uh, Camaro and stuff like that. But yeah, that's yeah. what it kind I mean, of. He yeah, doesn't even need to watch it. That scene just living up in his. Yeah, exactly. Here a here a picture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't even see the movie. I want to recreate that for myself exactly. at some point. Who knows? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> When you say you got uh, some travel coming up, um, is that uh, is it fair to assume that's surrounding like uh, some CrossFit stuff for semis or whatever? 
Um, some, some of it, yes. Like O'Keefe and I head out on Thursday. We're going to Fargo, North Dakota. Um, so fun fact, Fargo, North Dakota is the least traveled destination in the United States. Um, and I've this been will there. be my, this will be my fifth time going. Um, <laughs> you get a punch card, right? Is that the, is that the yeah. Yeah. games? Yeah. Yeah. So my buddy, my buddy, Connor, uh, McGovern, um, look him up. He's the center for the jets. Mm -hmm. Um, but he puts on this incredible competition for, um, for special needs, well, all, all levels. Um, so able body or special needs. Mm -hmm. It's a couple day competition. Everyone competes on the floor at the same time. There's there's team, there's teams, there's individuals. Um, but it was just such a powerful thing, uh, like an event that he's doing, that it doesn't get nearly the publicity that it deserves. Um, but yeah, it is just it's incredible. And like one of the things that kind of like blew my cat back was the number one uh cause of death for people with special needs is obesity mm. and that was bananas to me like that is such a what a shameful thing to let get in the way and it's just a lot of these kids with special needs they don't have the workout equipment they don't have the resources or the people around them don't have the know-how for how to exercise how to eat healthy do any of these things and um and so it's put on by by a called T TNT Fitness or T no sorry TNT Kids, um, and their whole thing is they're opening up facilities around um, that have the equipment for for these people to come in and get a workout in and be healthy. Um, so yeah, it's just an incredibly powerful weekend that O'Keefe and I get out to any any chance we have. I had to miss it last year because of my knee, um, but you know every year we go out there. It's a ton of fun. You feel you leave, you get a ton of thank yous. You leave, you know, better gratitude feel about your life, about your day, and just like, okay, how else? How else can I help? You know, it's just a contagious feeling of doing that type of thing. Well, that's a much better reason than why I went to Fargo, North Dakota. For why? Why did you go? <laughs> I was I was about a month shy of my thirtieth birthday, and I'd been to every other state in the U.S. And I was, uh, I had just finished volunteering at a camp with a, a friend of mine who was a youth pastor at the time. And it was, an, it was like a seven hour drive from where I was. And I was like, fuck it. I'm Go going. Do it. Yeah. I got in the car early that it. day, drove up there, visited Fargo. They actually, in North Dakota, they have a best for last club. If you're the, if it's the last state that you visit. And I had heard about this thing. And so I went to like really? the travel center when you cross the border and I asked him, I was like, this is my last state. I've been to all 50 states. Is the best for last club a real thing? And they're like, is it a real thing? They brought out one of those binders about as big as yours there, set it down on the table, flipped to some page, and they're like, yep, it absolutely is. And all of these people have come to North Dakota as their last state. They gave me a certificate, a T-shirt, a patch, took my picture. No and shit. I, the thing. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I spent <laughs> like an hour or two exploring Fargo. And uh, I actually would love to drive across North Dakota at some point. I think in the summer it would be a Why? nice drive. The Badlands? It's a nice, yeah, I don't know. I, I've you driven. Six, I've, if, if you put a six-inch lift in your truck, you can see the whole state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. Right. I've driven to all forty-eight continental states. So I. I all I right. Well. All right. Well, Friday we'll be in Fargo. We'll see you there. Book a <laughs> book a plane real quick. <laughs> oh, I, I think yeah. I think O'Keefe and I are heading out. We're getting there Thursday. I think we're there Friday, Saturday, uh, and then come back Sunday. Um, but yeah. Come hang out, dude. I got a, I got three weeks that I can stay at home. Since last July, I've spent two weeks consecutive at home one time. So I think I'm going to take I'm, advantage of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the same, I'm in the same boat of like the last little while. It's like, it's, it's shocking how little time consecutively we get at home. And I think April and May, I have one, I, I have a, at least one trip per week for, mm -hmm. for the next like seven or eight weeks. So another another reason why I want to get my pilot's license is so I can start yeah. flying myself places instead of going through TSA. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, you know, even if it's a, I had like a fifty-five minute flight to Jacksonville, but you got to plan a couple hours on either side of that. No matter yeah. what, you rent a car. All the other, the time adds up. Quick. So it was, uh, yeah. We we had some friends come into town to do a podcast, and uh, they 
so he, the husband had just gotten his pilot's license and they just took delivery of their plane. And uh, so this was their first flight. They flew from Nashville to Burlington and they only had to make one stop because she, the Sean, the wife had had to stop and go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, damn, like you can go Burlington to Nashville in one shot and took them three hours, uh, but you don't need to book the tickets. You don't need to like, it's just, you just get in and go, but we did the podcast or let me take one step back. So I signed up for flight school like two or three years ago. Um, went on the discovery flight, loved it. Was like, this is sick. I'm in. And then Mal asked me to coach her. And so I was like, yep, I'll do that. And so that I took all the free time. So I just didn't go to flight school. And then, uh, and so I started again or no, I hadn't started again. And then these, this husband and wife came into town. They flew their own plane. We did the podcast. Sam and I drive them back to the airport and we walk into like the private terminal and we just walk straight through out onto the tarmac. They hopped in their plane. They're like, see you later. And they just taxi out and take off. And as, it was, <laughs> as we were walking back, Sammy was like, yo, that's awesome. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, if you, I'm like, if you give me a year or two of like free time to like, you give me time to go fly and study and all this stuff. I'm like, I'll go do that. Like, sure. Why not? Like other people have done it. I can do it. Um, so yeah, it's just been so, but so much fun and getting to see other people that have like, you literally just show up, hop in your plane and go. It was pretty sick. Yeah. It totally changes travel. Yeah. You know, flying. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. Well, I hope that it continues to go well, and uh, yeah, you know, no doubt about knock it. Knock on wood. Uh, knock, knock on wood. I'm still here. You know, it's it's an extra motivation when you're studying. Of like, mm, if I cut this study session short, I might die. So I'm going to study extra hard. <laughs> hey, hey Matt, how how um, I mean, you're such a busy man, but how how do you do you keep track of like what's going on in CrossFit, whether it be from a community or a sports side? I mean, I imagine. I mean, we've had conversations before where you've you've said like, I didn't even know they made these rule ch changes until like I showed up or I read an article on morning chalk up or something like that. I mean, do you, now that you're no longer an athlete, you're coaching and you're coaching athletes and you're, you have this training program. Um, are you more, I guess, invested in the community or in, or in CrossFit than you normally would be? I'm, de I'm definitely more invested in the community um, yeah. in terms of like meeting people, hosting events, having mm -hmm. people out, trying like all that, like, Oh, tenfold i'm yeah. more involved um in terms of like the stuff at the games like the nitty gritty detail stuff at the games no i'm i'm it's like mm -hmm. it doesn't a lot of that was just a guessing game and it yeah. was almost more like preparation of like all right, i'm going to start preparing for these 10 things and maybe one of them ends up being true like just stuff through the rumor mill or whatever it mm -hmm. is um but no really really trying to instill the same things that i preached when i was competing um of hey like who cares what people are saying might happen we're going to mm -hmm. wait until the rule book we're going to wait until we are told what the rule is we're not playing this guessing game we're not running around like maybe this what if that um and then, you know, especially now after, especially after the last open announcement, we had so much fucking fun here, um, with just members in the space, in the gym, throwing down, um, you know, I started, started doing it with another group of guys that, um, it was one buddy was coming in and he was bringing in a kid that he was helping out. And, uh, and he, he asked me, he was like, you know, is there the conversation started. He was like, Hey, do you have an extra weight belt? I have this kid that I'm trying to help out. Um, I was like, yep, here you go. I was like, Hey man, why don't you come in to my gym? Like, let's mm -hmm. grab a workout together. So he and this one other guy were going to come in and then one other person wanted to join. So he's like, Hey, is it okay if I bring a third? And I was like, dude, more the merrier let's go. So th this, this guy showed up with 12 people and I was like, stick. <laughs> and, and it was super cool. Like, I didn't even know like some of the guys that showed up, I went to high school with like one of the guys was my high school quarterback that I haven't seen in 10, 12 years. Um, a couple of the guys, you know, they've never worked out. Uh, they've never done cry, heard of CrossFit, anything. So it's stuff like that, that I was like, all right, I'm going to take these 12 dudes through a workout. And, and after it was like, 
I'm, I'm getting messages and, you know, I'm just like, that was amazing. Like, can we do that again? And I was like, let's do it every Saturday. Like, let's just make this a thing. Um, yeah. And so it's stuff like that. You know, it's, I've never, ever done anything like that before because it was always, no, I'm here for my training. I don't care if it takes away from my training, I'm not doing it. And now it's like, well, no, now I care more about your training than mine. Like, so let's, mm-hmm. let's find a workout that works for you and then I'll jump in on it. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been really cool. And not only being more involved in the community, but creating a local community here. Um, it's been, been a lot of fun. What would you say? As, oh, I'm sorry, Brian. Um, oh, you, you go PC. What do you, what do you say? What would you, what, what's your opinion on the state of CrossFit, the sport today or this, even this season? Oh God. I, I don't, I don't have enough information on that to, to have a, have a, an opinion worth anything. Sure. Um, from, from what I've been hearing, from what I've been seeing, it's, it's tracking in the right direction. Things mm-hmm. are, are going well. Um, you know, like even just something as simple as like looking at the programming from the open. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. All inclusive. Everyone can crush the workouts. It's great. Moving on to quarterfiles. Like I, I like the few changes that I've heard on, you know, the formatting of quarterfiles, like, Hey, you have mm-hmm. a, we have a longer time window to complete all the workouts now. So, you know, it's, 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 I'm sure it'll be the way it is. I hope it remains Mm -hmm. progress, not perfection forever. Like, yes, we're always, I hope they're always striving to be perfect, but it's like, no, that's foolish to think that anyone doing anything could do it perfectly. Um, But yeah, I I think, you know, I'm O'Keefe is much more tied in on, on that stuff. And, you know, he fills me in and it's like, no, things are going in the right direction. Um, But who knows, man? Yeah. What do you think of it? Where Where are we at? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want to know. No, uh, I, I, I kind of, I'm kind of in the same boat. I, obviously, me and Brian, we have to be more tuned in. But I, I think it's heading in the right direction. I think some of the changes have been good, but I, I just think the consistency, um, you know, just trying to keep the qualification, trying to keep that the stages at least, you know, consistent. It seemed like every three years is a different way, a different route to get to the games. You just never knew. Every um, every three years. It might, yeah. Dude, I, don't I, know. I didn't I didn't have a single season yeah. where there wasn't a different qualifying procedure, a different scoring system, yeah. something different. My entire career, seven years of the games, eight years, eight years competing total, not a single year was the same. Yeah. It's and like that that seems hard to accomplish. Sure. Like, hey, we need we need eight different variations of how to. It's like, really? Yeah. Like this. Did you ever take that personally? Point? Did you ever take that personally? Like, it was like, <laughs> like, oh, they're doing this to 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 upset me or to pull me out. I mean, no, I fucking think? loved it. Yeah. I'm like, do you, do you know how much better a victory feels when mm-hmm. you're like, I am, I know for a fact that they tried to fuck me over, yeah. like. <laughs> It's fucking amazing. Uh, <laughs> and, it's, and, and it's like, yeah, you don't, there, there's no, there's no excuse of like, oh, you only did well because it was this scoring system. You only did well because you were in that easy region. You only did well because of this. I'm like I did them all. Yeah. Fucking. <laughs> I'll just, this will um, be a little, a little teaser for something we're doing later in the week because it's, it's in my mind, but it puts into context what you were, what you were referring to. You know, the first year you made the games was 2014. That year in North, in North America, there were 430 spots available for regionals. By yeah. 2018, there were 200 spots available for regional athletes, male and female. And this year there's only 80. Wow. So the premium for a spot to just to get into a, an event that can qualify you to the CrossFit Games is five times less than it was ten years ago. Yeah, and I think that's, I think it's suitable. I think that's appropriate with the progressions. Mm-hmm. Like who who knows? Maybe, maybe 80s too much, too little. But but I think dwindling down the field. Um, yeah, I mean, like I remember my first year at regionals. What was there? Six heats. That was probably maybe was that 2013. Was that your first one outdoors there? Yeah. 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 2013 at Reebok headquarters. I don't know for sure. I want to say there were six heats all the way through. And it's like, 
do do we really need that many to figure out who's <laughs> the best here? Like, probably not. Um, but I mean, it's 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 exciting. Like, I love the like watching the sport. It's exciting. Like, there are some personalities that are getting attention and some names that are getting fucking good and it's going to be a really exciting games did you did you by any chance have you heard about this reps ahead that we did this last weekend no no i'm sorry maybe you check it out it's a it's a one-on-one competition two minutes on one minutes off you're chasing a score of of reps relative to your opponent if you get the number of reps ahead match ends otherwise it can go up to seven rounds so it's a little it's like uh a lot more premium on one on like a one-on-one setting than you could really have anywhere else. So um, we, sorry, say that again. So you have a two minute, two minutes of work, one minute rest, and you're just performing one motion or you're accumulating reps. And yeah. as soon as you pull a certain amount ahead of somebody, you win. It's like Correct. a knockout. Think of it as like a UFC That's, or a boxing match. That is very cool. Yeah. That yeah. is interesting of like, Hey, can I sprint out enough in the beginning to get that rep ahead? Or yeah, ooh, I like that. Yeah, we had uh James James Sprague took on Dallin Pepper on Saturday and Alexis Raptus versus Fisa Gaffi. Those were the the top matchups. What what did Sprague and Pepper do? The workout, so the the cool thing you can kind of manipulate the workouts a little bit to get some desired refresh. So this it actually went the distance, but uh Dallin was kind of in cruise control. He couldn't he didn't he decided he couldn't cha- he couldn't get the pre designated reps ahead, so he just got far enough ahead and stayed there. And stayed there, yeah. Yeah, damn. <clears throat> but it was but pretty that, fun. I think I think there'll be more of them that'll that'll pop up throughout the year and the years oh, to for come. Sure. Yeah. I think Dallin. I think Dallin wants a. Now that he's like the champion, because this is the second one they've done on the pro level, and uh, trying to convince him some way to make this into like you know you're the champ, just like UFC. And you know, I was like, and I asked Dallin like, who would you want to face? I mean, you're the champ. You can call out whoever you want. And you know, I threw some names at him, but I think I think he he mentioned Jason. You know, I think that would be a, a really I think it'd be fun because just like UFC, you want to have compelling matchups, you know, where, they're, you know, you know, you want to build up some hype to it. Yeah. And I mean, like something like that, too. It's like there's so much strategy involved that it's like, mm-hmm. hey, it may not even be the fittest person that wins. So it's like you can always compete with your buddy. And it's just like you can throw a Hail Mary and have it work out. And if it doesn't, you're like, whatever. I threw a Hail Mary. Of course, it didn't work. You know, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, low, low pressure, low pressure, good fun. I like it. I do think to to your comment though that um, I personally think that this is the most, I'd say, most competitive top end of the men's field that we've potentially ever seen. Meaning that I could say like four or five names right now that I believe have a chance to win the CrossFit Games, and another four or five oh. that might be able to podium. And for majority of, you know, basically since Rich entered the scene. It's been one or two names every year at most on the yeah. men's side that you really felt like had a chance to win. Um, oh, that yeah. Just I'm, totally I'm in the same boat. Dynamic. Like you see, like even just last year at the games, it's like, damn, these little things like a twisted ankle mm-hmm. dictated who finished on top of the podium. You know, yeah. these little one spot here or there dictated the entire end result. And there are there are a lot of guys right at, nipping at each other's heels um it's exciting you know it's it's going to be and and i feel like this year the chirping just hit a whole new level i which, love it <laughs> yeah part of part of me loves it part of me is just like i don't care for it um yeah. i like watching other people do it yeah that's what um, i saying. that's why i like it <laughs> yeah i like me personally i hated it it was mm-hmm. like no if if i could be anonymous through my whole career, I would have been. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's fun when you see it, but it's like, I think, I think I'm think i enjoying it because I think so many people that I've heard, you know, making comments or going back, it's like, no, they're all contenders. It's when, when you hear somebody that's not a contender, yeah. you know, shooting their mouth off, you're like, oh, okay. Let's stop. <laughs> um, like, I, I yeah. always think of, I always think of that, um, that Conor McGregor, like press conference, I forgot who it was. Someone spouted off and goes, who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. I was thinking yeah, about and that. I, yeah. I always look at it, you know, especially like when I was competing, like the justification I told myself was when somebody would, you know, take a shot at me and, and I was like, you have to use your words. Like actions speak louder than words and your actions don't say shit. So you have to talk because you have nothing else to say your message. 
I was like, I'm going to stay quiet and you will hear my message loud and fucking clear. And so, you know, it's stuff like that. Like you just, you have to find that silver lining or that spin in your head to not drive yourself insane. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun when, when there's four or five guys all that have real shots, like Mm -hmm. real, real shots of, of winning, winning it. Uh, Yeah. It's fun. It's fun to see the competitive spirits come out. Yeah, I mean, resumes that back it up, like those guys have all won big competitions, whether it's semifinals, yeah. a couple of them have a games title, Rogues, Dubai's, Wadapaloozas, et cetera. Um, and they seem to all be kind of jockeying for that that spot. It's pretty fun. <clears throat> this Now the Barbell Spins finally put like a media poll out. To, and you see like, you know, maybe a dozen different people around the world participate in it. And they're not the same. You know, it's not just like the same person over and over and over again at the top. And it, I always go back and forth, like just following sports in general. You know, I was like, uh, it's fun to see records broken. It's fun to see these streaks continue. It's fun to have this like Tiger Woods versus the field mentality from when I was in high school. But it's also mm-hmm. fun to go into the, the world championships and have no idea who's going to win. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it, it drove me up a wall when, when I would hear people like, like hurtful. Like when people would be like, oh, you know, watching you is not exciting. Like that, that shit hurt because I'm like, damn, I dedicated my life to that. Like that was my, that was my piece of work at the end of the year. And you're just like, ah, it's not exciting watching you compete. It's boring watching you compete. Like that shit was hurtful because I'm like, you're devaluing everything I'm doing. Like that person over there did the same thing and I did it better. And you're, you're more excited over watching them. Like that sucks. Um, Sorry, I forgot where I was going with that, but um, yeah, you know, but hearing, hearing, like, I understand it. I understand it now, now that I'm not competing. And now that I'm watching some events, it's like, yeah, when somebody's up by 200 points and then like the final workout is, is a good one for them. It's like, nah, like we already know who won. And So, you know, it's just been, it's been an adjustment and it's, but it's going to be exciting coming in this year. Like there are a lot of names and there are some new younger guys coming up. Um, And also like just the size of the field. When I competed, if you were over six feet, you were a fucking anomaly. Mm -hmm. And then it was at semifinals last year or two years. I forget my timeline sucks, Uh, but I was at semifinals and I'm, I'm sitting there with James Sprague, Dallin Pepper, and Jason Hopper. Just like we're all chopping it up after an event, having a good time. <laughs> and I'm sitting there having a conversation like this, to all three of them. And I'm like, dude, right. like a couple and in of that years same ago, semifinal, you got Alex Vigneault, you got Roman Krennikov, you got just like a lineup of guys that are six feet plus. They're all huge. When the fuck did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is something that kind of, uh, I, it like really frustrates me actually from a, just a storytelling perspective over time. Cause they never weigh and okay. measure you guys at the games. So, you know, Tia has been listed at 138 pounds every year. She's been competing at the games, oh. but I know yeah. over the course of 10, 10 years, she's been competing that she doesn't weigh the same every year. But if, but if she's just a, you were the same way you were always listed Dude, at I, five, seven, one ninety six. That's your data. One of those every is year. Yeah. I'm <laughs> right. I'm five, I'm five, six. Mm. Um, <laughs> I should hang on to that five, seven, but, um, like when, when I, one of my first big competitions and I have a picture from it, I was 169 pounds. And then I also competed four, three, three months, four months later at two Oh three. Wow. Like different years at different games, Mm -hmm. different competitions. It's like, obviously my height, my height didn't fluctuate, but yeah, body weight, you know, and it's, yeah, that is interesting that they never took. No, so it's impossible for me to say that like, hey, in 2015, you want to be, you know, let's just take a time range. 2013 and 15, the average top 10 finisher at the games was 5'9", 195. Four years Mm -hmm. later, it was 5'9 and a half, 200 pounds. And now we're at, we we can't do it because we never, we don't have that historical data. I mean, that'd be, one thing I'd be super interesting and super interested in would be wingspan. I've mm. always been curious about how wingspan contributed because I've always thought I'm like, I think a large wingspan is beneficial in every sport. And I think, mm-hmm. I think 
for the most part, it would be beneficial in CrossFit. There's going to be a couple movements that are, yeah. uh, you know, dis- you're at a disadvantage. But even that, like wingspan or wingspan and ratio to body height, or wingspan to whatever it is. But certain things like that, I think, would be super cool to know and have the data points on. Mm-hmm. I tried. I tried to do it a few years back, and I realized that it was just I, we were at the mercy of whatever was on the game's profile, and I don't. Yeah. No one really yeah. updates that. Actually, I went to the because we were doing this one-on-one matchup, and I was like, you know, we create a graphic, we'll show the athlete kind of their bio stats, some some fun stats from recent competitions, whatever. And so I asked all the athletes there. I was like, this is the data that I have on you. And I think out of the eight athletes competing, that two of them were like, yep, that's accurate, and the others were like, actually, I weigh about uh, twenty pounds more than that. Actually, yeah. I'm two inches taller than that. I don't think I've put. Well, and then, James, I mean, James Big was, was like, I don't think I updated that since I was 16 years old. Like, yeah, and like they they kept like wanting you to put in your benchmarks and i'm like no i don't want to tell my competitors what my what times they have to do to beat me no i'm leaving all of this blank (laughs) and uh it was actually it was actually like for years i would like remove all that stuff put my like uh my display photo my stats my bio all that and crossfit would change it crossfit Hmm. went in multiple times and would change it and dude, it was stuff. I'm like, don't fucking put that in my bio. Don't put that in there. Like it was, it was to the point. I'm like, dude, fine. I'm just not going to sign up for the open. Then you guys can't fuck with me. So there you go. Don't you hear me? I want to compete anonymously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe they'll change it over time. And obviously there's a certain element of, of that from a competitive nature that you don't want to be out there. But I think it would also would be reasonable to say, hey, if you make the games, we're going to measure you and weigh you when you come in just to have a record of games athletes over time. Well, I mean, think about how easy that would be too. Of like, you just have a graph board put up and it's like somebody just walks up, like they put their back against it. You see their height, spread your arms, put your fingers mm-hmm. up against one. Oh, tip, got your wingspan, you stand on a scale, measure your foot, and then you're out. I think that'd be sick. They yeah. do it right when you check in, when you have to sign your signature and pronounce your name into the recorder. You just step over and right there. Yeah. Yeah. Too I think easy. that, yeah, that could be super cool. But then also like they have collected data like that before and somehow fucked it up. I remember, I remember the ones that <laughs> somebody put out and this was like Reebok or somebody like it was a, wasn't just like an individual. They're like, Oh, the last three CrossFit Games champion had size 10 and a half foot. Like Rich Froney, Ben Smith, and Matt Fraser, they all had size 10 and a half. And like I comment, I was like, I don't have a size 10 and a half. And they're like, <laughs> Well, that yes, you do. That that's what's listed. And I was like, Are you fucking with me? <laughs> like, I've been buying shoes for a long time. I know what size I am. And they're Maybe. just like, no, 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 it's not listed. I'm like, that's right. your Reebok. That's your Reebok 10 and a half Reebok, not nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my personally, my the I thought the best changes that they made at the games when you no longer had to wear a, a required foot product. You, you I know, was that was never a rule, right? <clears throat> really? Yeah. Th- just I, one I'm, challenge. Dude, I am that this is. This is me being told from Nike. Nike is like, oh no, we read every word of the rule book. Mm-hmm. They're like, in no other sport is the shoe considered apparel. The shoe is considered equipment. And uh, so, yeah. I had to have this conversation. I used to coach high school soccer as a varsity soccer coach. And the uh, athletic director, who was the head football coach, used to play in the NFL. He was actually, I think, on the 2008 Patriots championship team. And he got a deal with Nike to be a Nike school. Friend, all your players got to wear Nike cleats. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. In soccer, like your cleat is your foot. Like, exactly. Yeah. There's no professional team that every every team is wearing the same shoe because they rec- they wear the same jersey, of course. Mm-hmm. And I it was like a battle with him, but I was like, nope, absolutely not doing that. Yeah. I I mean, like, yeah. I, I I've had it before where it's like, you're forced to wear a Reebok and it's like, I haven't had a chance to train in it. And it's like, yeah, I've lost events because of it. Like you can find a clip of me going for a pretty routine split jerk and my foot, like rolling out of my shoe. Um, and I was just like, yep. Yeah. You know, and I'm not blaming on that. It's like, no, I should have, I should have had that shoe a week prior, broken it in and trained in it. Um, 
but it's like trying to pretend like the shoe isn't a piece of equipment that it's equivalent to a pair of shorts or a t-shirt. No way. Yeah. No, it, it's what's connecting you to the ground. It's, it's a very important part. <laughs> yeah. And oh, that's enough about that. I so, think. so don't, don't quote me on that. I don't know if it was actually a rule <laughs> or not. I'm going based off what I was told by someone that was in a very, very trusted position and he was like, oh, no, like that was not allowed what they did. Uh, mm -hmm. It was just like, who's going to call our bluff, you know? Um, well, so, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, thank, it's a very personal thing. So, yeah, thank, thankfully the rule did get changed because it's like, yeah, day of competition, you're going to wear a different cleat, wear a different lifter mm -hmm. and expect to go for a, a max lift. That doesn't seem... Right. And we right. want, I mean, ultimately we want the best expression of physical capacity and you want to, you know, you want to create an environment where of course support your sponsors, but you still want the athletes to be set, mm -hmm. set up for a success. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're probably going to maybe uh, wrap up in the next five minutes or so, Matt, if that's all right. But uh, before we do yeah. that, I wanted to uh, just kind of um, get your take on the, you know, kind of the, the premier HWPO athletes this year, looking forward to the season. What are you excited about? What, you know, how much are you involved with those guys? I know you got, you know, um, me and Jake and everyone's, you know, kind of sharing the load, but yeah. So, yeah. So I, I've, I've switched roles, um, not dramatically, but a little bit of the day to day or the, you know, the, the point of contact. So we, everyone else is, has points of contact with some of our other coaches. And then I have, you know, multiple meetings a week with those coaches to kind of go over, Hey, how's your athlete doing? What are they going through? How are the results? All that type of stuff. So I'm in a bit more of like a over general manager. Over, yeah. Like a DM um, role. Yeah. And it's just been, it's been phenomenal because all of our coaches are studs. They, they go above and beyond even, you know, they're not even asked to, it's just, they, they're going above and beyond. They love the athletes they work with. Um, yeah. So, you know, I still have contact with, with the athletes. I'm still talking to them on a regular basis, but um, no, it's really exciting seeing some of the stuff. Like a lot of the stuff we did with Katrin last year was like, I don't want to say experimental, but it was definitely like out of our comfort zone. Um, it was just much different than what she had ever done than what we had ever done, but it was stuff that Steve, Steve came in and was like, Hey, I think X, Y, Z. And so, you know, it was kind of a talk with Kat, like, hey, are you willing to roll the dice to see if this works? You know, do you want to carry on with this? And she was like, yep, let's do it. And, you know, she couldn't have been happier with the results at the games. And and so now it's some of those things that we implemented with her, we're implementing with with other athletes, um, and we're seeing some great, great results from it. Um, but just making sure, like, the athletes are getting what they want. You know, every athlete's here for a different reason. They have different motivators, different, you know, whatever. Um so it's really just connecting with each one of them and making sure that they're getting what they want out of it. There's been some that some really tough conversations of with athletes, like uh, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but like Colin Brander, where she's like, Hey, you know, I, I could compete this year and have another year right down the middle, but what do you, what do you think? What do you think I should do? And so, you know, there's some tough conversations of like, Nope, like I think the right move is to step away for the season and then come mm -hmm. back stronger next year. Like it's there, there's more to life than just this as well. Like you don't want to have back pain the rest of your life for a moment in the spotlight. It's like, no, let's yeah. do this. Let's make sure we're doing it correctly so that we can walk away from this happy and be happy about it forever. Um, not walking away with a limp and a fuck. I wish I did it differently. That uh, that kind of contextualizing that experience with Katrin, I think, is pretty valuable because obviously by the time she comes to you, you know, she's a decade deep into her own professional career. She's already made mm -hmm. it to the top, you know, and she still has a, a passion and desire to compete, but she's also willing to try something new. And I think mm -hmm. that, you know, that that experience, be able to communicate that to athletes that are younger or, or veteran and can say, hey, you know, it's never too late to kind of tweak, redefine, reevaluate, and look for a different kind of optimization. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Katrin was a perfect example and like kudos to her for allowing us to, to try that. Um, and granted, like, it wasn't like, it was just like some obscure idea that we threw against the wall. We're like, Hey, you want to try this? Was, no, we, we have some, we have yeah. some data behind it. We think we know what we're doing. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it really did change a lot of how she trained and how she went about it. Um, 
And I think some of the other athletes saw that. And it's kind of hard to deny, like, you know, someone of Katrin's resume where, um, you know, she's been competing for 10 years, 10 years plus, um, but then went from not qualifying at all to then breaking the top 10 again. Um, you know, I think that that turned some heads and to people that know what they were watching, like the people that have seen Katrin in here every day. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're like, yep. Okay. That's, that's good. That's impressive. All that stuff. Uh, people on the outside of like, Oh, you should have been top 10 before who, you know, whatever. Like, yeah, you, you're never going to win. If some, if somebody doesn't like you, it's like, you're never going to convince them that, that you're doing the right <laughs> thing. So, but it's like Katrin, the person that did it, loved it, saw the benefit. And I'm like, yeah, you're 10 years in not many people have more experience than you. So yeah, I'm going to put some weight on your opinion. Was that, um, was that experience with Katrin? Are you kind of taking those lessons learned with someone like Brooke? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, some of the stuff we impl implemented with Brooke. Um, I'm trying to think of who's taking who's taking a lead with coaching her. With Brooke, uh, Jake. I think Jake's working with her on the day to day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it's great. I'm I'm just excited to get everyone back up here. It's one thing mm -hmm. to you know have contact and coach people or be involved in their coaching remotely. It's another thing to when they're when they're here and it's like that, that's what I love. I love yeah. watching a set of squats and having a conversation, you know, it's uh, not sending me a clip and then yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, like that, if that's what needs to be done, then that's what we're going to do. But it's like, if I have it my way, I want, I want everyone in person. I want hands on. PC, were there any uh, questions in the comments that you saw at all? Uh, I know you pulled up something super early. Yeah, that was uh, that was by mistake. But um, yeah, what's up, Matt? Just wanted to say big thank you for inviting my boy Rafi out to train with your crew for semis last year. I believe in that dude so much, and he's such a dear friend of mine. Um, Rafa, I think I was there when you when he showed up. Uh, it was right yeah. when you guys had the uh, the um, the grand opening. He was there. Yeah. So yeah, he, he was here for the grand opening, and then uh, he ended up sticking around. Uh, yeah. I think for like five weeks mm -hmm. um but it was it, it's just all stuff that i'm like no like i want i want to be, be able to provide not just the gym you know like there's gyms everywhere um but someone like rafa where it's like he had he has a wife a young daughter um you know it's like he has to be mindful like he can't just get on a plane and then go rent a hotel for a month it's like he has to be mm -hmm. mindful of that and so it's guys like him where I'm like, I don't want that to be a barrier of entry for you. Like what, a, yeah. what a shameful stop to somebody's dream is like, Oh, I can't afford to train full time. I can't afford to be in the, where I can get the correct training all the time. Um, so, you know, we like as a company or, well, so I, I, I did it and then rent it back to the company, but like we bought a duplex so that athletes can come in from out of town. They don't have to worry about hotel fees and shit like that. So someone like Rafa, it's like, he was here. We fucking love the guy. Like you can't ask for a nicer, harder working guy. Um, and he had, he has a passion. He was chasing a dream. And so I was just like, dude, take a bed over the duplex crash there until semifinals. But until semifinals, I want you having the ideal training scenario. So whether it's nutrition, the gym space, coaching, living, like, yeah. So it's like that was one of the best fucking experiences for me of, like, one of my top moments in my, like, post-competing career was being at semifinals and watching mm -hmm. Rafa on, on the first event, you know, take second place. And he's he's out there, like – He's going out like, I don't think I belong here. I Like all these things. I'm like, no, you belong. Like you've been doing it. You got it. Let's go. Let's go prove to yourself what you can do. And he goes out there and gets second place. And it's like, oh, shit. You know, I think he surprised himself. And it was just one of those things that was like, okay, that's that's why we're doing it. That's, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's why I want to provide the opportunities I want to provide. Yeah, I remember that moment at Semis that you're talking about specifically. It was just like, that's probably, I mean, that, I think, how that moment and then you know just your interaction you and jake's interaction with katrin during that semi-final last year just like is probably the most animated and i don't know it's like outside of 
outside of Mal and her performance at the games where you're, you know, crying and, you know, just so proud. Um, those are the other moments that kind of stick out. So that was really mm-hmm. cool. But uh, Heidi yeah. had, uh, by what basis does he judge successful affiliate programming? What basis does he judge successful affiliate programming? Um, I think one, does it, does it work? You know, are, are they, are people seeing benefits? Do people like it? It doesn't matter how good a program is. If you're miserable doing it, it's not going to last. Um, you know, we have to, we do have to keep in mind that like our end user is, is the affiliate owner. So it's like giving detailed lesson plans, giving clear instructions on how to sub sub movements, how to scale. Um, it's not just getting an Excel spreadsheet of, Hey, you're doing thrusters today. It's no, this is how these are the timestamps. These are, you know, tips for the movement. These are how you warm up the class. These are equipment substitute, like just over providing that information, making sure that a, the members like it and they, they keep coming back. And the biggest thing is that they're seeing results. Um, but then making sure that the affiliate owners like it as well. Um, like we've all heard affiliate owners, you know, even Greg Glassman at one point was like, no, having games competitors in your gym is the biggest drain on resources that you can have. And it's like, oh, damn, that that sucks to hear. Um, you know, I, I try not to be. Um, I intentionally try to stay out of the way. But um, but it's like, no, that that there is truth to that. Some some games competitors are a huge drain on resource and a distraction of the class. And that trickle effect mm-hmm. can really compound. So um you know, we wanted to try to incorporate the two together so that one affiliate owners aren't pissed when they see people doing doing our programming and vice versa. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, if you can't be here and be a part of this community in Vermont with us, then it's if you're at a gym and doing the programming, uh, you're still a part of your home gym community, even though you're pursuing something a little bit different. Yeah. And then uh, someone asked, I think earlier on, like, and I know we had the conversation about this a while ago. Uh, it was about you getting your L one. Have you? Have you? Are you still exploring the opportunity to getting your L one, or have you got? I've, I've had. I've had I know you had it in the past. Oh, you got it. Yeah. So you renewed it? No, I, I had it in the past. I yeah. had it in the past. Yeah. Yeah. I think someone asked. I, mean, I, I was. I, yeah, I got. I, I got my L one down at CrossFit Southie. Ooh. Um yeah i think ben ben bergeron was actually working i don't think he was a flow master but i think he was working the seminar uh Mm, yeah yeah no i did it i I took the course nice i think that's it (laughs) yeah i think that's all we got in terms i mean there was other questions but uh i think we've had you on a little too long here you're you're a busy man you probably have someone to feed yeah (laughs) (laughs) Well, Matt, thank you, brother, for for taking the time. Like you said, we've been well, dude, trying to schedule this yeah. for a few months now, so it's nice to finally catch up a little bit. Yeah, dude, thank thank you guys. Good, good, just catching up. Yeah, definitely. We'll we'll definitely see you at semis. Are you gonna Are you gonna make it down to um down to cross? Is are they throwing at? Is Jason doing the quarterfinals at CrossFit Crash or? Um, oh God, where where am I traveling to? For Indy quarter. Christ. No, I I know, I know my semifinal schedule off that man because we just finalized that. Um, yeah. Just because there's a lot more travel, so like I'm going to be over in France for for a while um, during that. Yeah, I think we're I think I'm going to be in France for like seven or nine days. Um, you know, like we're working with Victor Hoffer, so getting some time in with him. Uh, awesome. You know, another young young guy, up and comer, ton of potential. So it's gonna be gonna be super exciting. I'll be, I'll see you over in France. Yeah. That we did a, a show last week on the depth of the men's field in, in Europe. Um, we're going to do mm-hmm. one on the North American East women this week, but it's, uh, Heck. I mean, it, it's competitive out there. Oh yeah. Oh so yeah. <laughs> a couple of days with you ahead of time could go a long way. Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, cool. Well, thanks again, Matt. Appreciate it. Tell, uh, tell Matt, tell, uh, Sammy, tell the whole crew, tell Jake, did you see that picture of Jake in the, the Easter bunny outfit? probably saw the real no. thing at one point no oh, no God. it's so scary i'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll go track it down i'll, I'll try yeah, He's no, in the yeah, office next door. i'll go get yeah. it yeah it's it's yeah just ask him about the easter bunny outfit man it's 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 crazy but anyways but uh yeah tell the whole crew we said hi and um yeah hopefully we'll see you all guys in semifinals hopefully 
So absolutely. All right. We'll see you boys there. All right. Appreciate it, Matt. Have a good one, guys. Matt Fraser, five time fittest man on earth, taking time out of his life to spend some time with us. Appreciate that. We're not going to stick around too much longer today. Tomorrow we got uh, Bella Martin's going to come on. We're just going to do a little catch up um, on things that have been going on in CrossFit since last time we talked about them. Uh, some competitions that happened this past weekend and uh, just other news and notes in the sport. And then Thursday, Alexis de is going to join us to do a little deep dive into the North American East women's field, similarly to what we did with Nikolai Rono and the European men's field last week. Um, so that's kind of the up and coming stuff. PC. Yeah. Um, looking forward to tomorrow's show. Always, anytime we can get bell on and let's kind of recap what's going on and, um, what went on and what's going on. It's always fun. And then uh, we might even have a little special guest on Thursday. I know you hate it when I surprise you with, but mm-hmm. when I have someone that someone, uh, a little special guest with us for the preview show or um, not the preview show, but assessing the American North American East. So, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that one to show. Those are always fun, but uh, yeah, uh, we, yeah. Article went up today on the website, actually uh the companion piece for that podcast so if you want to kind of get a read ahead and see what a preview what we're doing what we're going to talk about on thursday just go to the be friendly um be friendly fitness.com here i'll pull it up real quick uh yeah and then you shall see that assessing the depth of field for north america east yeah Brian goes pretty deep in a deep and dive. There's a lot of familiar names and some names to keep an eye out on. So go ahead and check that out. Kind of read ahead. Um, and then we also have friend of the week. So that'll be released tomorrow. Friend. Uh, actually we have two. So friends of the week and then just bunch of, bunch of cool stuff going on. So we, uh, we appreciate everyone as always. We appreciate HDR CBD as always for being our sponsor. And, you know, if you want to try their product, which we highly recommend, you know, use, friend 20 and you'll get 20 percent off your purchase at hgr cbd so but always shout out to carl and his team for helping us out and so that way we can do podcasts like this so but anyways i think that's it um i can't think of anything else um I mean, unless there's some breaking news hopefully you know this week i don't know not hopefully but there typically is but again thank you everyone for being in the chat sorry we can get to all the questions um you know but we definitely appreciate you being here and as always be friendly our friends